just want to say it's a pleasure to be here today, and I want to also thank Ben just for all of the work that he's put into this program. It's, it really is a wonderful opportunity, and um, it's a <laughs> pleasure to be a part of it. So I sort of consider myself an appetizer of sorts. I'm a sort of get your taste buds um, lined up for my other colleagues who will uh, talk further about uh, the disorders and, and as part of that I sort of start off with giving sort of an understanding of how our nervous system is arranged talk just as touch about um, our immune system and the immune system responses and then sort of give a little bit of an explanation of each of the disorders so that then hopefully you'll have a preparation for the other discussions later into the day so I like analogies and comparisons of different things. I think it helps make things easier when you're trying to break it down. And um, you know, I'm a neurologist. I like the brain. I like the nervous system. And when you think about it, you can break it into parts, like you think of a stereo. So when you think of a stereo, it has multiple parts. It has the, the receiver, the tuner. It has the speaker. And it has the cable. And you need all of them in order to get it to work. If you just have the receiver, that alone isn't going to get you anywhere. You actually have to have it, plug it in with the cable, and turn it on before music will actually come out of the speaker. Similarly, we have our brain, we have our body, which is composed of the muscles, and our nerves, which connects the two. So our, our signals come initially start from our brain, from and they're sent through the nerves, and then our muscles are sort of the action in our body. So like we think of cables, our ca you know, if you were to break down a cable, it sort of has the inner wire and the outer covering. And you may hear of demyelinating disorders, and that's that outer insulation. And that's used basically to help conduct the signals faster. So basically, there can be a problem anywhere in the system. There can be a problem let me see if I can get this pointer right. With the speaker, say somebody knocks over, you know, kicks out the speaker, that's probably going to mess up and you're not going to have an issue. Okay, there we go. Um, with producing sound, you may have a cat or a dog and they may come and chew on the cord or the cable, and that would be an issue. Or there could be an issue with the receiver or the uh, stereo itself. So any of those things could cause a problem with producing sound or making an issue. So typically when we think of being having problems with the nerves, that's going to have that's going to limit the quality of the signal. So it may still produce sound, but maybe it's just the quality isn't good. It may be staticky or there may be an issue with that. Or there may be actually an issue in the brain itself where there's a problem with the initiation of the problem. When we think of the issues today as far as neuroimmunologic systems, we're basically considering any sort of problem within the brain or issues within the spinal cord or the cables. So sometimes as neurologists, we might look at sort of muscular disorders or things of that nature. But basically today, we're basically considering brain, spinal cord. That's it. And then, so we have nervous system, but it's an autoimmune disease. So it's involving something of the immune, of the immune system. So how is our immune system designed? It's basically designed as our sort of protectors or guardians and try to determine what's our body and what's foreign. And so it helps look for what are referred to as antigens to help fight or clear out infections. It can also look for cells that are producing in an uncontrolled fashion and has a role as an anti-neoplastic fashion. So those are the functions of the immune system, and they're very important. So there's, this is just a slide of the different blood cells that are involved with the immune system, just to show that they're there's lots of parts of it, and it's a very involved system. 
And what happens is when you have a cell, it actually is looking for a match. And it doesn't necessarily, this part here may not necessarily meet and cause a connection here and cause any issue. But once it meets its match here, so there it's not really doing anything, it starts producing like wildfire. And then problems with, and that basically causes issues with inflammation. So basically what happens with immune diseases, there's things that look basically like or cause the body to think that it's an, in, an in, infection type of issue, so it's producing a response and causing an over, infl, um, causing an inflammatory process. So what are the diseases, as uh, Ben mentioned, that we're talking about today? Well, there's transverse myelitis. When there's multiple episodes of that, that's just basically given the label recurrent transverse myelitis, meaning that it's happening more than once. We have neuromyelitis optica, NMO, or also referred to as DeVix disease. There's ADEM, or acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, and multiple sclerosis. So I'm just going to kind of break down and give a little bit of an introdu introduction of each one and kind of how they are associated with each other. And then once again, you're going to get further sort of explanation as the day goes on. So transverse myelitis literally means a section of the spinal cord that has inflammation. That's sort of the definition of the term. It can be on its own, just spontaneously happen, or it can be related to some other sort of cause. It can be related to other types of connective tissue diseases, or sometimes there can be viral infections that cause it, or even vascular types of um, problems can be a, a cause of this issue. Sometimes an episode of transverse myelitis may be a part of another sy syndrome, such as neuromyelitis optica, or even patients that will go on to develop multiple sclerosis, their first event may be an episode of inflammation of the spinal cord. So when they first come in, they may be just told that they have transverse myelitis. When we think of neuromyelitis optica, typically that's an attack on the spinal cord and also involvement of the optic nerve. So it's inflammation of both the spinal cord and optic nerves. And actually not just one optic nerves, but both optic nerves, and it's profound inflammation. So oftentimes with transverse myelitis, you may get just a little blip of inflammation in one spot or two spots. But with NMO, it's big honking inflammation. It's inflammation of large areas of the spinal cord where there's lots of swelling and lots of inflammation. And one of the things that's interesting about it is with that degree of inflammation of the spinal cord, you really don't see a lot of inflammation in the brain. So there's really a, a mismatch there. And what we've come to find out recently is there's also an antibody test that we can test for that sometimes helps with the diagnosis. And then there's acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. This is often something that actually occurs more often in kiddos. Um, but this is basically a, sort of a more of an infl uh, inflammation process that's often triggered after an infection or after receiving a vaccination. And so there can be several areas or pockets of inflammation that typically don't look the same way that we may see scarring or inflammation with areas of involvement with multiple sclerosis. And as physicians, when we're checking spinal fluid, we actually see a lot more inflammation in the process. And typically, it's a one-time event rather than an ongoing process. And then finally, we have multiple sclerosis. And there's different forms of that. Most commonly, it's relapsing remitting. Then oftentimes, that progresses into secondary progressive. And then there's primary progressive. And that involves, once again, an, an immune system problem that both en encompasses um, that attack on that outer insulation, but can also cause damage to the nerve where the cable is cut. And this involves the brain itself, the optic nerve, and the spinal cord. So how do these relate to each other in terms of transverse myelitis, ADEM, 
NMO and multiple sclerosis is in her, uh, with lesions and timing. Well, transverse myelitis typically is a one, maybe two lesions, and it's a single event in time. When you have ADEM, you t it may have multiple areas of inflammation, but it's also more likely a one-time event. In comparison, multiple sclerosis may include spinal cord inflammation, but it's also including other areas of the brain and optic nerve, and it's ongoing. So it's what we refer to as a multiphasic process. So it's over a long period of time. And, so, and in the middle, as far as a, a medium number of involvement that's also an ongoing period of time, you have uh, repeated episodes of transverse myelitis, the recurrent, I can get it to go. There we go, transverse myelitis. And then also the neuromyelitis optica, which can be on, those ongoing events of inflammation of the spinal cord and optic nerves. So that's how they all relate to each other. They all involve inflammation of sorts of either the spinal cord of the brain, but they have different time schemes and, and are somewhat different um, in, in the nature of their inflammation. But what I wanted to just kind of set up was some questions to kind of consider as, as some of my other colleagues will be coming in for the rest of the day. So one is, how does this happen? Why does autoimmunity develop? I'll give you a little key, uh, key, uh, sort of key. We still don't know. I mean, we're, we figured some of it out, but there's still a lot of unanswered there. And then also, what are some of the similarities of these diseases, and how are they different? And I think one of the important things of a, a conference like this when we're meeting together and talking with each other is, Yes, these are rare diseases, but we always have hope, and then just because they're rare, it does not mean they're untreatable. And with that, I'm happy to read any questions. <laughs>